Hi, my name's Paula from Flourish Chic Emporium and today I'm going to show you how to do decoupage using paper napkins. There's lots of different forms of decoupage but today we're going to focus on napkins. You can buy napkins anywhere, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, eBay, Amazon, it doesn't matter which napkins you buy, you can do the same thing with all of them. Um, some are more expensive than others because they're specifically for decoupage, but it doesn't make them different as napkins, just a prettier picture that you can buy. Every napkin that you buy is made up of three layers and when we decoupage something on we need to remove the two back layers. So we will be left with one very flimsy, very fragile piece of paper and that's what we're going to place onto the suitcase today. I've prepared this suitcase earlier with chalk paint using wedding cake and grey pebble from Frenchic. It's grey pebble on the inside. When I got this case it was a little bit tatty inside, paper, and in some of the corners was a little bit torn so what we did was glean it up, use some finishing coat to seal up the, the holes and the edges and then paint it over in grey pebble. So it looks quite nice now and it's ready to paint. So I spent some time thinking about what I wanted to put on this suitcase. This was my first attempt over here at a slightly smaller one that we got. I think it looks quite effective and it's literally whole sheets of uh, napkin put on all in one go and overlapped. It's important when you prepare your napkins that you tear the edges. If you were to stick on a, a dead straight edge it just wouldn't look right especially if they're overlapped whereas the torn layers just blend into each other and I think look much more effective. So I've prepared a whole pile of napkins here and I've taken the backs off so they're all ready to go and I've torn round all of my pieces. So I'm going to be placing them fairly randomly and overlapping onto my suitcase. So in order to stick them down we need to use some finishing coat which I shall put into a little pot here and as you can see it's quite a liquidy watery consistency which actually is perfect for decoupaging napkins because it is so liquidy and not sticky and gloopy like PVA for example it doesn't tear the napkin so what we're going to do is just put a bit on a brush really randomly slosh it on not too thick not too thin but it doesn't have to be the perfect shape of what you're going to stick down because it's going to dry clear dry matte and we're going to be finishing coating the whole suitcase afterwards anyway. So now I'm going to very gently place it onto the wet area, get a tiny bit more wet on my brush and now as you can see that just rumpled up so you've got to be really careful, very gently use your brush to smooth out the bumps. So here I am gently brushing down on top of the napkin using my brush really carefully because now that the napkin is wet it's really fragile and is prone to tearing. If you do notice a slight tear try to brush it back in the other direction, tap it down and then come away and leave it alone. You can do any repairs at a later point if necessary. I have seen a very effective way of smoothing it down which you could try which is using cling film and if you place a bit of cling film over the top you can then rub with more force and brutally to, to get it down and get all of the wrinkles out but you must make sure that when you peel the napkin off the cling mm -hmm. film off that you do not use that bit again you need a clean bit every time because if you put the sticky stuff back down it will then tear the napkin off okay so I've got my first piece down I've made sure that all of the edges are sealed and as you can see that's looking quite pretty. So now we're going to start working on putting some music pieces randomly in exactly the same way. A random patch of finishing coat. Tap it down. A little bit more. 
finishing coat. Sometimes I have an idea when I've started one of these projects of where it's going to go as today I've already torn these pieces up and I know other times I've just gone along as I've put each piece down and worked out where I want the next bit. See it's not sticking enough. Excuse my phone beeping. You can see it's not sticking enough. You just add a little bit more of the finishing coat. I wanted to get another one of these on here for another angle. I think. Zoom out, and you can see. The nice thing about working with napkins for decoupage is that by the time you've got to one layer it is so translucent that they can be overlapped really easily and the join not really showing too significantly so particularly when you're making something like using flower napkins you can build up as if the flowers are actually growing up a leg of a chair for example and it's really effective you can't necessarily see the joins. So if you can see as an example of just that, this is a napkin on here and obviously they've been overlapped. You can't see where they've been overlapped, they all look part of the same grey. So back to my suitcase, I'm going to carry on adding layers, starting to overlap them now to show you what I mean. I have used paper napkins on so many different projects. Um, I've made bags, they go on top of, you can use this finishing coat to put them onto bags. I have put them onto bottles, I've put them onto wine glasses. I have used lots and lots on different furniture. I've even covered a demijohn in them. Uh, 
massage mat cling all over it, including the handle. And here, good. and it's still quite easy once it's dry to pop out the little gap. I think it looks quite effective. But having reassessed it now as a whole suitcase, I'm not really happy just leaving it like that. I think it's a bit patchy and it needs to be blended a bit. And a lot of you have seen quite a lot of my pieces. Uh, on the friend cheat fan forum and you've seen a lot of blending technique going on so I'm going to show you how to do that um, but first of all I'm going to just give this a quick blast with the uh, hairdryer to make sure that the friend finishing coat is properly dried and that the napkins are secure so I'll pop back in a minute Right, so I'm going to use a stencil brush for this because it's got a nice flat surface. Sometimes I use a sponge because again you get a nice texture with it. But today I'm going to use a stenciling brush. I'm going to go back to my two original colours, Wedding Cake and Grey Pebble. And I'm going to just dip my stencil brush in just so there's just a little bit on it. And then use it to... Dab randomly around my shapes to blend back in just a little bit to the original colour of the suitcase. Now this works because it's the same colour. But I often start with one colour and then build up in different layers of different colours. This takes away the squareness that some of these napkins have, have made here, I think. So you can be quite brutal with it because you're going to go over the top with other colours as well. It doesn't matter. You can't really go wrong unless I splodged it right on my face. I'm just trying to soften the edges. And where it's got more paint, I go back to it and spread it out using more. I shall carry on working on this and then come back to it. Okay. Okay. Right, so I've done the white. It doesn't mean that's all the white I'm going to do, but it's all the white I'm going to do from now. I've tried to soften the edges of all of the shapes that I've stuck on. So now I'm going on to my grey pebble to add some contrast. So there's quite a lot on the brush at the moment. So I'm going to come back to these areas. grey I might end up coming back putting more white on it but we'll see how we get on so as you can see it's coming back to the areas that there was quite a lot on the brush easing it out a bit only working a tiny bit on the brush at a time so it's almost like dry brushing really you're just getting that much on a brush I've also used this stippling technique on um, image transfers, which we're not covering today, but sometimes image transfer is not um, a perfect art, it's not an exact science, and sometimes there are things that go wrong around edges where it comes away, and this is a very good way of blending blemishes away so it looks like they were deliberate. So helps to give the project some texture. Go ahead. Okay, as you can see, I've done um, a grey layer, and I've just gone back with the white just to break up a few of a few last bits that were looking a bit clumpy in in grey. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that now. I think it all works quite well together. I, I like the fact that the front's fed clean and white, except for the handle. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So all I'm going to do now is wait for what I've just done to dry and then add a final two coats of um, finishing coat that will make it waterproof and waterproof 
and job done. Right, I hope right. you've learned something today and I've managed to help you. If you've got any questions, please contact me uh, and please follow my page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash The Emporium Furniture, which will take you straight to Fairy Chic Emporium. Thank you very much for your support.